we are making some delicious biscuit topped chicken pot pie. <laughs> I don't know where you all are at in the world right now, but it has been in the single digits, even in the negative temperatures out here in Denver. And I couldn't think of a better dish to serve when it's this freezing outside. The ingredients that we're gonna be using in our biscuits this afternoon are gonna be one and one third cup of all purpose flour, two thirds of a cup of bread flour, three tablespoons of vegetable shortening, six tablespoons of butter, but I'm keeping that chilled in the cooler for right now for when we have to pass it through our box grater. One tablespoon of baking powder, not baking soda, is important, you need to differentiate. Baking powder right here. Two teaspoons of coarse, 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 <laughs> coarse kosher salt, I'm using Morton's. Half of a cup of whole milk. One quarter of a cup of buttermilk. Fresh rosemary, which we're gonna be mincing up. We pulled off our rosemary sprigs and now we're just gonna move through this with a knife. Mm -hmm. Rosemary's ready to go. Let's just get our dry ingredients in the bowl. I've got my butter. I'm just gonna pass this through the larger holes here on the box. It doesn't need, need to be super fine. What this does is allows your butter to incorporate more easily into the rest of your dough mix. You could chop, you could cube it up finely, chop your butter, but honestly, this is easier and it's even finer, so it's easier to mix into your biscuit dough. Hope that helps. We're now going to add in our shortening. I'm just breaking this off into like pea-sized pieces and spreading it throughout. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's kind of like when you make pie dough, you wanna have just these little pieces of fat spread throughout. This is not going to be a severely kneaded dough. We're not gonna keep going and going and going. We're not trying to develop gluten when we're kneading this. We just want it to come together loosely. We're gonna add in our rosemary at this point to our dry ingredients. We just added our vegetable shortening and we mix it to combine. Step four is gonna be adding our milk and buttermilk and then once again, mixing loosely. So we're just gonna incorporate our rosemary at this step. Just made myself a little well down here in the center of the bowl to pour my milk and buttermilk in. That's half a cup of whole milk and then a quarter cup of buttermilk. So we're just waiting for the liquid to be absorbed here and our dough to start to form before on step number five, we'll turn this out here onto our cutting board and knead this so it just comes together. Form this loosely into a dough. We just wanna keep pressing this until that butter starts gathering up all those little dried pieces of flour. Not trying to develop gluten here, so we're not gonna continue kneading for, for more than it takes to just mix this up. This is where your bench scraper comes in. Get that plastic wrap out because our next step is gonna be taking and wrapping this and allowing it to chill in the cooler. So I just poured my dough into a little rectangle right here wrapped it in our plastic wrap, and then we're gonna toss this in the refrigerator to chill for 30 minutes. Ooh. I would recommend some gloves if you have them on hand. You can just order these on Amazon. I get mine by the case at Restaurant Depot. What kind of cheap cooking stream is this where you can't even rotisserie roast your own chicken? It's about time saving, Randy. I included this in the recipe for two reasons. One, it's very easy to pick up a rotisserie chicken instead of having to roast it for yourself. But number two, it's also much cheaper. If you're buying like a whole chicken nowadays, you're, you're looking for like a three pound, three to four pound chicken, like 10 bucks. And then I picked this up at Sam's Club for $4. Not as high quality for sure if you're making it yourself, but saving a little bit of cash. Mm -hmm. So it's your pick. Helps to make it on weeknight too by getting the pre-cooked chicken. Exactly, Hover. See, you're picking up what I'm laying down. We're really just gonna peel off this chin, the skin here because the only thing I'm interested in is the meat. Pulling it like, chunks. I'm pulling our chicken relatively big. Just how chunky, how big a piece of chicken do you want in your chicken pot pie? Whew, all right. We've got our chicken pulled. This is ready to go, everybody. Here are the ingredients for the mirepoix, celery, shallots, carrots. Garlic is not included in mirepoix, although you'll oftentimes find it in the same recipe. Not technically mirepoix. All right, back down here on the board, we have our shallot. I'm gonna cut this in half through the root end right here. What we're gonna do is begin on one side of our shallot, our knife almost parallel to the board, and then begin making thin slices, always aiming towards the center, where everything kind of curves around, aiming towards the center of our shallot. And at the same interval, slice it down, and that'll get us a nice dice here on our shallot. We want to get a dice out of this as well. Cut planks, just thin sticks, batons, if you will. 
But once we have our sticks, we're doing the same thing we do with our shallot, turn it perpendicular, and then just moving down here at a quarter of an inch interval to get our dice out of it. We're gonna peel our carrots down. I'm just gonna cut these into rondelles. They're about a quarter of an inch thick. Rondelles, little rounds. Oh, oh, come here. Trying to run away on me. Next, I'm going to mince up my herbs that we're gonna be putting into the gravy. Now I'm gonna take my fresh rosemary and put it in the same ramekin that I have my dried oregano in, and then we're just gonna pluck our thyme leaves into that same ramekin. Let's get this gathered up and added to the rest of our herbs. Here's the garlic. I was saving this to the last step because the garlic's so sticky. We're gonna take it and put our knife gently over the top, and then just with the heel of our hand, give it a gentle pop. Easily removed. Did you not hear me? I was talking to the garlic there. Like you do. We still have the root end on the bottom of our garlic right here, which we're going to thinly cut, just like we do with our shallot. We'll give each of these cloves a second smash, and then we're just mincing. Mince, 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 till the cows come home. Minced garlic can go off to the side in a ramekin. We have everything meased up, ready to go. You need to preheat that oven. Okay, 425 degrees Fahrenheit, everybody. Let's move on to step 10. We're gonna saute the mirepoix in that cast iron pan. Just a tablespoon of oil will be fine. All right, listen for that sizzle. There you go. Man, it already smells good. I love the smell of mirepoix. Let's hit this with a pinch of salt at this point. So see how our shallots are starting to lose that raw purpleness? Same with our celery, it's becoming a little bit less bright and vibrantly green than when you first cut it as well. That's a good signifier of where you're at here in the cooking process. Let's get this stirred. Huh, just a minute here on the garlic. Bay leaf can go in too. Butter needs to go in. This is gonna be the first step in making our roux, everyone. We're adding in our butter. A roux, R-O-U-X, is a thickening agent. It's gonna add body to our gravy. It's equal parts butter and flour by weight. Flour goes in. So a roux is gonna have the consistency of wet sand, everybody. And we're just gonna give this another 30 seconds to cook out. We're gonna add in our chicken broth all at once. That's five cups of chicken broth. And you're gonna wanna make sure you have that whisk on hand so we can get rid of any lumps that might occur here in our gravy. All right, everybody, it's at this point that you can turn your heat up above that medium that we were sauteing at because what we need to do to activate a roux is bring whatever liquid that we've combined it with to a simmer. Whisk, 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 whisk. Nice three finger pinch of salt. Let's grate some black pepper in here. And then we also need to add in our herbs, peas, and then the final ingredient we're gonna be adding here for our simmer is gonna be the chicken itself. Rosemary infused biscuit dough. Hell yeah. The next up here is gonna be laminating our dough. If you've ever made puff pastry, that's a laminated dough. What I mean by laminating is taking and rolling out and then folding back in on itself, turning, rolling out again, folding it in thirds back in on itself and rolling out. That's laminating. So we're gonna do that three times here with our biscuit dough before we roll it out for a final time to one inch thickness, at which point we'll be cutting out our rounds. I'm get myself a little bit of bench flour here. Just some flour that I can reach into and sprinkle over the dough as needed. This is not part of the recipe. Grab your rolling pin, dust that as well. And we're just gonna roll this out like a half inch thick. And then we're gonna fold it back in on itself. Turn it, and then we're gonna roll it out again. You see what I'm talking about? Like the swirls, the discoloration. That's different concentrations with our butter and shortening throughout our dough right there. Now we're gonna roll out our dough to one inch in thickness, everybody. And we're gonna cut our biscuits out of the top. How is our gravy doing over on the stove? Simmering away nicely. Gonna make sure we're not sticking on the bottom of the pan anywhere. You, if you don't have metal rounds like this, guys, you can totally just use a glass that you have in your cabinet, a measuring cup, whatever, just to punch out a circle that's three to four inches wide. Again, trying to work with this as little as possible. We're not trying to develop gluten here in our biscuits. And that's what would happen by mechanically kneading our, our dough. And I could, I bet I can just make a biscuit out of this. Ha 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 Look at that, that's all the dough we wasted. And we're, we're nearing the end here, everybody. We're getting close to just having to bake this in the oven. At which point, I'm just gonna have to talk with you and you need to talk back to me. And I will slowly get less sober in front of your eyes. We're almost at what I would call a nappe consistency. Hey, what do I mean by nappe? Nappe refers to the viscosity of your sauce. So if I can take this and it coats the back of a spoon, 
and I swipe my finger through and it holds that channel, that's a nappe consistency. I am happy with the thickness of our chicken gravy that we got going on right there. So it's time to top this with our biscuits. Into the oven we go, 425 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 minutes, everybody. Oh my God. Ooh. That is a heavy pan, everybody. We have our butter that we melted in this pot earlier. We're just gonna take and we're gonna brush this over the top of our biscuits. Damn, look at that. Mm-hmm, I tell you what. We are gonna call it a day here on Ingrediology. Make sure that you're following us on our social media, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. I really appreciate you. You can find the class guide over on ingrediology.org. Again, if you'd like to help make our show possible, you can support using Ko-Fi or you can support us on Tastemade at a subscription level. Contributing $5 a month really goes a long way to helping us out with the cost that it takes to produce these streams. So thank you in advance and we will see you next week here on Ingrediology.